gross insubordination and a disgrace to the integrity of the university. What sort of signal does the university management send to students when they flout directives from the Ministry of Education, Parliament of Ghana, and the Ghana Tertiary Education Commission? This unlawful increment has interrupted students' period of study by causing them to defer. And the investment management should bow their heads down in shame for introducing a directive that has not only flout the order of the Parliament of Ghana and the Minister of Education, but also has no woeful consideration of the welfare of students. Second, perennial accommodation crisis. The University of Ghana currently admitted about 17,000 first-year students and has provided accommodation for only 6,000 students, leaving over 11,000 students on their own to compete with continuing student, resident students of the university and students from other neighboring tertiary institutions like GIMPA, UPSA, Wisconsin, Wisconsin University College, etc. The last time a hall was commissioned on campus was as far back as 2010-2011 academic year with support from Carl Bank, which are the UGE hostels. Any other hostel that has, that has sprung up anywhere outside or close to campus is allegedly owned by members of the university management, senior members of the university and other private entities. It is because of the negligence of the performance of duties by management and senior members of the university that the desperation has been set among students, thereby causing a number of innocent students to be ripped, ripped off and scammed by certain people in and around the university campus. This is evident in the number of prevalent deception cases that have been recorded on campus over the years. A large number of students have been denied their dreams of studying in the premier university, which is the University of Ghana, and subsequently abandoned their programs of study as a result of their inability to acquire accommodation and pay fees in full. The school management has taken advantage of the situation to illegally charge extra necessarily huge amounts of money from students in the name of protocol for students to be placed in halls of residence on campus even before they make legitimate payment for their residential accommodation. Going forward, it is our view that management of the university reviews their propositions given to investors who intend to build hostels on campus. The propositions must be reviewed immediately to attract investors to spring up enough hostels on campus to eradicate the accommodation deficit in the university. Point number three, hasty decision on residential policy, into brackets, in, out, out, out policy, and the hike in prices of residential accommodation. Today, or currently, management has introduced an in, out, out, out policy, a policy that was abolished some years ago after it was revealed to be full of challenges with no accommodation solutions. As a result of the introduction of this policy, excuse me, Residents of Commonwealth Hall and more continuous students of Mesa Sabah Hall have been moved from their halls over unjustified accusations. Unjustified, you see. It is imperative to note that every student who was removed from the Commonwealth Hall and Sabah Hall had a plan to complete their period of study in the University of Ghana in this halls. And the basis for which students were removed from these halls are unfair and again unjustified. It is not a secret that the basis for which residents of both aforementioned halls were removed to other halls was because of the decision of university management to use these halls to kickstart its new residential policy. The introduction of this obnoxious policy was based on rumors of residents of Commonwealth Hall allegedly being involved in a clash on campus in August of 2022. Even at the early stages of a supposed investigation by investing management, the hall master and senior tutor of Commonwealth were asked to step down from their duties as hall master and senior tutor. We deem all of these decisions very unfair because no fact-finding committee came up with substantial proof that indeed residents of Commonwealth were, wrong, were involved in the said clash. As such, we are of the view that residents of Commonwealth were wrongfully sent to other halls of residences to pay fees four times the amount they used to pay as residents of Commonwealth Hall. This new policy clearly proves that the management of the university, precisely the vice chancellor, has failed in ensuring peace and security on campus and should find herself to blame and not the hall master and senior tutor for a clash that has not been proven residents of Commonwealth Hall were involved. 
We call for the immediate removal of the vice chancellor. Yes. If she continues to find justification in the decision Mr. of removing the hall master and senior tutor of Commonwealth Hall as a result of the negligence of her duty of ensuring peace and security mm. on campus and also upon refusal to accept blame yes, for the said clash. Last year, residents of traditional halls paid a sum of 854 Ghana cities for a year as accommodation fees. But this year, the university management has increased the prices by more than 75%. And as, as a result, students are to pay 1,500 cities yearly for traditional halls. Concerning the UGA hostels, the updated prices stand at 3,842 a year, minus JCR dues and then full levy. With last year's price standing at 2980 per year, representing approximately a 30% increment. These increments are unreasonable. Students are suffering and we demand clarity. Next point, threat to student leadership. The management of the university has imposed sanctions on the aforementioned halls, Commonwealth Hall and Mensa Saba Hall, and in fact has abolished junior common room systems in these halls. To wait. Student elections in these halls were withheld from happening as at August 2022. It is very evident that as an academic discourse community, like the University of Ghana, it is prudent student leadership is allowed to suffice. Student leadership has been known to address student concerns over the years, and a policy proposition like that of the decision of the Dean of Students Affairs to call up the Jesuit Commonwealth Hall and Mensa Sabah Hall can be seen as very knee-jerking and seeks to eradicate or obliterate student leadership that has solved most of our problems as an institution. This proposition, as directed under the hand of the Dean of Student Affairs, is very nebulous because of the lack of accurate and concrete details for the core of, of the elections. Currently, the first-year students who gain admission into the Commonwealth Hall, for instance, have no access to orientation and guidance from their leaders since there is no existing JCR leadership. When a, when, a, sorry, when a proposition such as this directive from the Dean of Student Affairs is not given the urgent attention at this embryonic stage and is allowed to continue, it will trickle down to suppress, to suppress the student's leadership front in the university and destroy decades of hard work done by students to advocate for their rights. Next point. Alarming heavy armed security presence on campus and student brutalities. The university campus is an educational setting and the presence of heavy security is making students very much uncomfortable. Fear and panic have been set among students, and we deem this totally detrimental to our education and learning, since the sight of these armed policemen, military and SWAT teams, raises a lot of questions on the minds of students. Students of the University of Ghana are being brutalized by the school security every now and then. There is evidence of a particular video that captures a student being manhandled by members of the university security. That notwithstanding, there have been other instances of students being treated wrongly Though these, those situations have no recordings to show how brutal some of these encounters were. We would like to admonish the investment management that students are not slaves and they must be accorded the necessary respect as students to ensure peaceful cohesion between members of the investment security and students. We want peace. We want peace. Next point, consistent offering of unaccredited courses. Despite a just published 2021 Auditor General's report, which revealed that the University of Ghana has offered scores of unaccredited courses for the year under review. The University of Ghana management has turned deaf ears to the situation and is still rendering several unaccredited courses. This clearly shows how the university management is having to save the Our question is, why is it so hard for the university management to stop offering certain courses if they are unaccredited? Next point. Ban on hallway celebrations and hypocritical ban on public gatherings. The last hall week that happened on campus was in March 2020 in Legon Hall. Since then, students have for hall use without hesitation, even though they have not had a feel of what a hall week is in a very long time. We want to ask university management the whereabouts of these dues as hall weeks have been halted for close to three years. There is a ban on all public gatherings and our students, we want to know how long this ban is going to take. Students are privy. We are all privy to the cumbersome and bureaucratic processes involved in securing a permit to hold a public gathering on campus. And for this reason, securing a permit from the Dean of Student Affairs for a gathering is tiresome and not properly justified. It is also alleged 
that the vice chancellor, it is also alleged that the vice chancellor of the University of Ghana receives an amount of about 20,000 CDs every month as allowance for entertainment, and we need clarity to this information. Here are our demands. Number one, students demand a refund of the unlawful monies they have been charged as school fees and a reversal of the unreasonable and exorbitant prices of presidential accommodation on campus. Number two, we demand that management of the university comes up with a clear plan on solving accommodation problems. Lasting solutions have to be meted out to this long existing problem immediately. Also, starting from this year, students, we, students, every student, Consent every Tom, students. Dick and Harry, every student wants to see hostels springing up on the university campus. Number three, students demand that university management reverses their decision on the academic fees increment and immediately comply to the Minister of Education Directive on the 2021 academic year's fees increment. Demand number four, we demand an immediate reversal of the in-out-out-out policy, which has proven not to solve the accommodation problems, but rather incur several challenges on students. Number five, students demand reinstatement of JCRs of both Commonwealth Hall and Mesa Sabah Hall. Continuing students of these halls of residences should be sent back. The hall master and senior tutor of Commonwealth Hall, who are relieved of their duties, should be reinstated immediately. Point number six. Also, we demand that management shows concern to the rampant cases of scam where innocent students and parents or guardians are robbed of their hard-earned money and a situation of protocol fees paid and parents or guardians to be able to secure accommodation. Point seven, we demand a stop to student brutalities. Point eight, we demand the issue of all unaccredited courses resolved immediately. Point nine, we demand that the lift, there is a lift of ban on Hall Week celebrations and the lift of ban on the hypocritical ban of public gatherings as well. Your Excellency, as concerned students, we only believe in actions and early change. In light of this, we look forward to your very revered and reputable office stepping in immediately to have all of these problems resolved once and for all. We demand pragmatic solutions now because we are suffering. Thank you.